Hello everybody. Um, I thought I would do a just a chat today. Um, I'm going to do a lot more cooking videos, of course, but there's so much more to this lifestyle than um, what we cook. It's, I want to talk about what I'm trying to do with this video series. What I would like to do is I want to create a group of folks that can come together and share thoughts, ideas, support each other in their battle, um, help each other out when we face those difficult areas. I wanted to do, talk about a little more of my own personal battle to maybe spark some thoughts in someone else's mind about what could trigger their um, disorders. After the therapy that I went through, I'm not saying that I have discovered everything that has contributed to my eating disorder. Um, or turning to food for comfort. I had a wonderful childhood. Um, I had great parents. They were loving. And um, I can't, I mean, I can put some things on the influence of my parents as far as when you were happy you ate. But I think this is most families back in the 70s and 80s. You know, you celebrated um, accomplishments with food. You know, for your birthday, you get a birthday cake. Um, you get a nice meal made. On Christmas Day, you have a fabulous meal. Um, we had a wonderful breakfast. My dad would make breakfast on Christmas Day, and then we would have the traditional turkey. And, and I mean, it was just everything focused around food. Um, I'm not blaming, you know, because you become an adult and you have to take responsibility for what you do. And um, there are things that I have found looking back that mark triggers in my life. And the reason I say that is because at my age, I'm 51 years old. When I look at, back at things that happened to me in junior high school, and the fact that I can still remember them vividly and they still run through my mind, that has to be a triggering factor in um, how I viewed myself over the years. I did struggle in my teenage and early, early adult life with self-esteem issues. I overcame that pretty, pretty well by um, excelling in my work career. And I focused on that instead of my physical being, and that's what I found my satisfaction in, and that's how I built myself worth was through what I did for a living. But um, I learned, you know, in my later adult life that that falls apart pretty quickly. And if you don't have that basis for love of yourself, then everything else can fall away and nothing works anymore. So um, I was thinking about how I battled one particular incident in my life. When I was in the sixth grade in math class, our assignment, we were learning the metric system, but uh, right. at our activity for the day was to um, weigh ourselves in front of the class and, and convert that to the metric weight. I weighed 200 pounds in sixth grade, and um, that is probably the first time that that was publicly known as far as my weight. That's the first time I remember what my weight was. And this also, you know, kids being kids, and I'm not hold this against the kids. They were kids at the time. But they um, came up with a little rhyme. My, my maiden name was Lockett. So what they said was Melissa Lockett is as big as a rocket. Now, I can tell you, even to this day, no matter how much I try to forget that, when I put my foot on that scale every morning, not every morning, but when I put my foot on that scale, I hear that little rhyme go through my mind. So that tells me that I needed to face that. Um, and even though it was something that happened to me, you know, 35 years ago or however long, even though it was something that happened to me 35 years ago, it was still in my mind and that is how I viewed myself. So I actually was on, am still on a bariatric website. 
Um, it, it's a support network of folks that have had the surgery. I voiced this, which um, got a lot of comments on other people who shared their experiences. And once you face that and you say it out loud and you don't keep that hidden in your own memory and your thoughts, for me, it takes its power away. And though I do hear that when I get on the scale in the morning now, I kind of giggle to myself because you know what? I'm no longer that person. I was never that person, but that is what uh, hurtful comments can do to a person's psyche and how that could, no matter how much I, I lost in the past or how, how much I tried to change my own view of myself, that was still in my head because I hadn't shared the, the magnitude of that statement with anybody or what it meant to me or how it affected me. You know, I played off like it didn't bother me. And that's how I did most of my life is, no, oh, that doesn't bother me. You're not gonna see that bother me. But inside it was, you know, things like that would eat me up. And that's not the only incident. That's just one that really stuck with me. And I can still remember stepping on that scale in sixth grade and looking down and seeing that weight and having to write that on the chalkboard and convert it to metric measurement and the giggles and, and all that. But now that I have called it out, I guess, it's like calling somebody out. Um, I called that, that memory out. It's not really as bad as you know, I once thought it was, it doesn't hold the power over me anymore. And it doesn't mold the fact that I am as big as a rock and I always will be no matter what I do. That was such a powerful, powerful incident in my life. And I know that each of us have memories like that, that control who we are and what we do and how we, how we handle situations. I would like to talk about that. I would like to take the power away from those, those awful incidences in our lives that have, that have molded us. And if we face them, if we talk about them, and, and you realize that, you know, it's not really as bad as, as I thought it was, or, or admitting that it has more power over you than you would ever admit before, then you take its power away and it no longer has that power and you can overcome it and go past it. And um, these are struggles that I have dealt with. There, there, there's a lot more, but that is probably my first memory of, of um, well, not my first memory, but that's probably the most powerful memory. And it was probably because of the, the age I was at the time and what you're going through emotionally and your mind's forming. And there's probably a lot of, um, reasons why that stands out, not just psychological, you know, it's a development of your body and your mind at the time and how that affects you. But I would just love to be able to come together and, and help each other battle these ghosts and overcome our obstacles and just throw them back at the past and say, stay there. You know, you, you don't control my life. I really want everyone to feel the power that I feel and the freedom that I feel um, from letting this go. And um, I hope we can get some conversation started. I'd like to do some live video feeds and, and have group discussions and so we don't feel like we're on our own and we are a group and we do have that support. So I wanna thank you all for listening. I hope you will comment on this. Um, inbox me if you don't want it public. I don't, you know, whatever it takes. I just want to get this group going because I, I, I want to share the love and I want to share the strength that I feel. And um, God bless you all and we'll talk to you soon. Bye guys.